This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Hey, I'm Primitive Tim, and today's episode is going to be all about birds of prey. Birds of prey. Now, that encompasses a wide variety of birds. That includes ospreys, eagles, owls, vultures, hawks, and a few more on top of that. As a whole, these birds will eat a wide variety of prey, including animals as large as young reindeer, rabbits, squirrels, mice, small birds, carrion, which is dead animals, and even insects. Now stay tuned because I'm going to show you completely wild birds of prey catching their prey items in nature in a totally natural way. Now right up here behind me is an eagle's nest and you can tell it's just absolutely huge. Now every year they're gonna come back to this nest to lay their eggs in and each year they're gonna build onto the nest. So over the years it just grows bigger and bigger and bigger. On top of that they're also gonna be doing repairs on that nest from year to year because during the off season when they're not nesting hurricanes or strong winds could come through and damage that nest. So they're gonna have to repair it, make sure that it's up to snuff for the next nesting season. Now ospreys are very specialized birds. They pretty much eat only fish. And so you're gonna find them around lagoons, lakes, and rivers. The way ospreys hunt is pretty cool. The first step is they'll go way high up in the sky. From there they have a good vantage point. They're gonna be looking around for vulnerable fish on the surface. Once they spot one that they like, they're gonna go above it and they're gonna just dive head first and tuck those wings in real tight. Right before they hit that fish, they're going to fling their talons out, grab the fish with a very strong grip so that slippery fish doesn't squirm away. They're going to grab it, take off again, and fly off to the nearest perch. Now as they're flying, regardless of how they grab that fish, they're going to take that fish and turn it so that the fish is facing forward. That way it's going to have a little bit easier time flying with a better aerodynamics. So we're about to go on a hunt with a red-tailed hawk and, and the hawk's falconer. And so the way this works is the falconer will, will walk through the woods tr trying to disturb the squirrel. So they'll be shaking trees and vines and stuff to make that squirrel jump and run off. So the, the hawk is going to be sitting way up in the trees following the hunter, waiting for that squirrel to get scared up. And once it gets scared up and it's out in the open in a very vulnerable area, it's going to swoop down, grab the squirrel, kill it of course, and then um, after it kills up in the tree, it's going to bring it down to the ground where it's going to finish eating the squirrel. Now owls are a very specialized bird in that they're nocturnal. So this means that they have to be able to hunt at night in these very low light conditions. Now owls have specially adapted eyes that are huge and these large eyes allow lots of light to come in. So as they're going around through the trees, they're collecting a lot more light than my eyes or your eyes. Now the talons have probably got to be the most important tool that the owls use in hunting. So when they're scanning the floor's floor for a little movement here and there by say squirrels or rabbits, it's those talons that make the action happen. So when he comes down, grabs that animal, he uses that grip coupled with the razor sharp talons to take down the animal, to kill it quickly and immobilize it. That way eliminating any possibility of escape. Now in order for owls to be successful hunters, they have to have an element of stealth. Now this comes in with their feathers. They have specialized feathers with an extra little frill at the edge that will allow them to fly through the forest completely silent. Now this comes in handy when you're coming up on some prey that has very good hearing. 
because that prey isn't going to be able to hear the owl coming and the last thing that will go through its mind is a talon. It's also important for the owl to be silent because it has excellent hearing and the more flight noise it can reduce, the better it will be able to hear the movements of its prey in the underbrush. All right, so I've got the bait out. I've got my GoPro set up on it so we can get some cool close-up action. And now all we have to do is just wait for the vultures to pick up that scent and come down and start eating the carcass. Vultures, they don't have any feathers on their head. And that's pretty much because on their day to day basis, they're sticking a head inside of a carcass. And so, if they had feathers on their head, they would be getting their feathers very dirty all the time. But with a bald head with no feathers, that can get washed off pretty easily. Now, we've got two different types of vultures here in Florida. And right here, these are all black vultures. The other type of vulture is, uh, of course, the turkey vulture. But um, for some reason or another, only black vultures have descended on this carcass. Now, I do see a few turkey vultures flying around here, but um, for some reason, they're just not coming down. So, I don't know if there's some kind of hierarchy going on here or what. So let's let's go ahead and check out what they what the damage was here. Um, this is actually really incredible. Right here and here, these are the legs, and they actually turned them inside out to get all the meat out from under that skin. Rather than trying to break through the skin, they just, they were already on the inside, and they just pulled them out and kind of just pulled them out like a sock or something. They ate most of the guts. There's a few stuff. There's a little bit of meat back in here. But man, they just really devoured this carcass here. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Primitive Tim. It was an absolute blast to film. I loved seeing all these birds doing their thing. You can follow all my filming adventures over at Twitter and Facebook. I'll be making updates, telling you guys what's going on, what the next project is, and all that. And until next time, find a new way to appreciate nature. This is a Burmese python, and they're actually water dwellers spend most of their life out here in the water. Beautiful, they've got how big he is, he's huge. They're actually an interesting This species. is ABTV.